In this video, I'll be discussing the Kibi Dramatic Classic Image Identity, the body type, the style profile, and at the end, I'll be sharing a sample wardrobe for this type. Hi, I'm Non from My Authentic Style, and this channel is dedicated to helping you find your authentic style. This video assumes that you've taken the Kibi Body Types test and you've found your type to be dramatic classic. If you haven't, you can go a few videos back where I take you through the test and the answers. Otherwise, for a dramatic classic, your answers should look something like this. Mostly C with some A, so mostly blended with some sharpness. As noted previously, the Kibi system is a measure of yin and yang, with yang being sharpness and elongation and yin being the softer element, so softness and roundness. The position of the dramatic classic on that scale is balanced with a yang influence. And now let's discuss the Kibi dramatic classic style profile. Note that every dramatic classic woman will look slightly different and it's the presence of balanced yin and yang and an overall moderate and symmetrical appearance with an additional yang undercurrent that makes the dramatic classic. And now let's look at the dramatic classic body type. Height, moderate, up to five foot seven inches. Body type, fairly trim and compact when at what Kibi describes as an ideal body weight. This is obviously subject to interpretation, but I do think what he means is not when this body type is carrying any excess weight, because as we'll see later, that does tend to change the shape of the body. So this is when they are neither too skinny or have any excess weight, just at what they would consider their normal weight. Slightly muscular when at an ideal weight, Bust line, waist, and hips are somewhat straight and in even proportion when at ideal weight. On occasion can be slightly short-waisted. Legs and arms tend to be average or slightly long. Bone structure. Symmetrical with slightly angular edges. Straight and slightly wide. Shoulders are tapered or slightly square, usually narrow. Slightly squarish hands and feet. Slightly sharp, angular or squarish facial contours as seen in the jawline, nose and cheekbones. Facial features. Usually moderate to large eyes and moderate lips. Coloring. Any coloring is possible. They can be warm or cool, high contrast or blended. Hair. May be thick and straight or fine and silky, but rarely coarse, possibly wavy or curly. I would again put an asterisk here just to say that I think like coloring, any hair texture is possible for the dramatic classic. If overweight, excess weight shows up right away and collects from the waist down. The dramatic classic seems to gain weight in the hips and thighs. They rarely gain weight around the bust line. The heavier this type gets, the more pear-shaped they become. The dramatic classic body type will seem to radically change when they gain even a little bit of weight. This is an illusion because the bone structure remains exactly the same underneath that weight. So here we have Gugumbata Ro, who is unverified, but is somebody that I believe to be a dramatic classic. Here we have Gugumba Teror, who is unverified, but is someone that I believe to be a dramatic classic. And we see her here at three different weights. She is at her skinniest towards the left and towards the right is her at her heaviest that I found. And obviously this is going to be slightly tricky because even at her heaviest, she is really small but this does give enough of a variation where we can see how her shaping changes. In that first image, you can really see the sharpness of her bones. She is visually just skinnier than say the middle or the image to the right. 
I can see the elongation in the arms. I can see the sharpness in that bone structure. She does look like a relatively small woman, but I do see that elongation in the arms. And just that sharpness really stands out to me. In the second image, she has, to my eye, gained a little bit of weight as compared to that first look. And you can start to see the shaping of her body. And this is in part because of the outfit that she's wearing in the second look as compared to the first one. But there is just a little bit of additional softness and she still definitely leans more sharp, but that flesh brings in an element of softness and it gives her curve. In the third look, I think this is where it's most evident. She is as compared to these other looks at her heaviest, although she is of course still very small, but that additional flesh further creates that hourglass, or rather more pear-shaped, I suppose. But she has a much more rounded bottom area, and even her bust line and her arms, there's all of that additional flesh that makes it softer. And she doesn't look as sharp as she did in the first image, but that sharpness is still there. So hopefully this is something that you can also pick up, but you can definitely see what they mean by the shape of the body can change quite drastically. In that first look, she looks very straight, sort of. You know, if we were going back to a different type of typing system, like the one that uses the shapes, in that first one, you could almost classify her as some sort of rectangle. And in this third look, you would classify her as an hourglass or a pear shape and that's a very dramatic shift and it's just because of how much additional weight she has on her body so this is a very interesting thing i think with this body type another dramatic classic is olivia munn and we can see her also at these three different weights so for olivia munn i do see something different and even slightly opposite to what we see with Gugu Mataro. At her smallest or her skinniest, this image with the red swimsuit, she is much softer. So there's a softness that she just has. I do see her sharpness, of course, but she just has that additional fleshiness to her makeup. And as she gains weight, so the middle image and then the image to the right, she becomes more fleshy. That's very evident. But she doesn't suddenly turn into, she doesn't develop an hourglass figure like Gugun Bataro does. I think that her shaping, if we had to go back again to that sort of rudimentary class system, she would be leaning more and more towards being rectangular. And for her, she is her curviest, quote unquote, when she is her skinniest. And that's just a very interesting way to see how these two things can play out in two different people. I think as she gains weight, it makes her a little bit more boxy. And that's not what happens with the first case that we looked at. So just something to think about and be mindful of. And then we have Felicia Rashad, who for me follows the same trend as Olivia Munn. So in her case, I think at her skinniest in that first image in the leotard from that iconic episode of The Cosby Show, you can see her body outline and her waist mostly defined, as defined as it's going to be. She's at a similar weight in that second image where she is on a cover for an album that is a tribute to Josephine Baker, as you can see in the style of it. But again, I see, I like that picture because I can see the angularity, those knees, I can see that slight elongation. I can see why she's a dramatic classic. The images to the right of that, where she is older and she has put on more weight as compared to those first two, you see that her waist sort of vanishes and her, her body type becomes a lot more squarish than it was, or it was always squarish, I suppose, but it becomes more so because of that thickness. And I think this follows the trend slightly closer to what happens with Olivia Munn as opposed to Gugum Bataro. And again, I just think this is interesting. A dramatic classic will not have extremely long limbs, 
have extremely large bones or extremely large hands and feet, have delicate bones or extremely small hands and feet, have an hourglass figure, or have a boyishly straight figure. A dramatic classic will not have extremely exotic or overly lush facial features. So here, these three women to the top, Elizabeth Taylor, Adele, and Tyra Banks are all soft dramatics. And as such, their facial features have this bigness to it. They have the angularity as well as the softness. So they are both angular and quite lush. And there's just a prominence to those features. So it's quite far away from what we would expect a dramatic classic to have in terms of features. Likewise, here we have a picture of Gigi Hadid. She, I believe, is a flamboyant natural. And then she has additional softness to her. But again, it's very lush. And we wouldn't expect a dramatic classic to have that level of lushness to the facial features. Here are some dramatic classic celebrities. Those marked in the green are verified by Kibi and those in the yellow are either speculated by Kibi but not verified or completely not verified in the case of Gugun Bataro. And going from left to right, we have Jackie Kennedy, Felicia Rashad, Olivia Munn, Gugun Bataro, and Diane Kruger. And here is a list of Kibi verified celebrities. And now let's discuss Kibi dramatic classic lines. Shape. Symmetrical geometrics, which can be sharp or sculpted. Trim, tailored, taut and crisp and slightly chunky. The silhouette should be triangular with the widest line at the shoulders and narrow at the hemline. All of these women look lovely in the outfits they're wearing and you can see which of these elements when it comes to shape they're utilizing in this first look olivia munn has that sharp tailoring in the skirt the top is a lot softer and rounded but the skirt really anchors that look and you can see that right angle in the design of the skirt as well as at the slit there's those sharp lines again the edging is sharp there's just that weight to the fabric really that solid angularity that leans very yang and it looks beautiful on her and the shaping is very streamlined that second look showcases more of that symmetrical design but there is that sharpness and the cleanness to the lines and the edging and also her shoes are very sharp, also still very streamlined and it looks great on her. And then the last two show us that triangular sort of shaping with the widest point at the shoulders and then narrowing in on the hemline, especially that look that Gugun Bataro has to the right. You can really see that triangular shape because her shoulders are emphasized and it just looks stellar on her. Also, there's a symmetry. So it has all of these things just done absolutely correctly. And that's such a beautiful look that I think on a different type could look very boring. There's not much going on, but on the classic type, it's just so harmonious on them. And it's very elevated. I don't find this to be boring at all. It's very interesting on her. And likewise, Felicia Rashad, in the image to the left of her, she has that sharp tailoring. You can see those sharp lines in the collar of her shirt. And there's that structure brought in by the blazer and then that very narrow sort of streamlined shaping through the skirt going down. And she also looks very refined, very polished, and they all look great. You want to avoid ornate, intricate, or delicate shapes. So here we have Olivia Munn and Diane Kruger, both of them in these very delicate sort of rounded shapes. And on both these women, these looks feel very much like a costume. These are for people with a lot more rounded edging and a very, a much more youthful essence, I should say. And for that reason, 
these dresses look very childish on these women because they don't mesh with that sort of grown up, elevated, polished requirement of the classic type. And it just looks not right. And then the coloring as well and the fabric choices, it, it just doesn't really work on them. So too intricate, too ornate and much too delicate. That pink dress that Diane Kruger is wearing also is quite irregular. So there isn't that symmetry that's necessary for this type. And in that lack of symmetry, which would be okay if there was a sharpness to it. So this is just irregular, but also lacks that yang quality, that sharp, clean lines that would make it work for this type. Here again, we see that irregular shape on Diane in this red dress. It's mostly symmetrical, but then at the bottom, you can see it has a little bit of angularity and, but it doesn't work on her because that fabric is too rounded and soft and it lacks that structure and rigidity that would mesh with her bone structure. So on her, this red dress almost feels like it's melting off of her and it just doesn't give the harmony that is required. Avoid unconstructed or extremely boxy shapes. So here you have Felicia Richard and Jackie Kennedy, both of them wearing these sort of shapeless styles, and you can see that their bodies are completely lost. I think it's more evident in the picture of Felicia Richard, where this dress just works as a sort of curtain on her. It's like she's wearing this large piece of fabric and I don't know where she is behind it. And it's much too theatrical, much too lacking in structure and shaping and it completely swallows her up. On Jackie Kennedy, the there's a similar effect, but it is a lot more streamlined than Felicia's outfit. And also the fabric weight in her outfit helps to give it a bit more structure. So it does look better on her. However, again, this isn't one of her most harmonious looks because it's lacking in that structure and that tailored sort of fitting. Avoid boxy shapes. So here we have Gugumbata Roar in something that is very interesting because it's a suit, which great for this type, great for the classic, but the way that she's chosen to have it tailored and then to style it really makes it off on her. So the jacket itself is fine. I see the crisp lines and the fit is okay. It's not the greatest, but it's not bad. That would be okay if she was wearing something different underneath like a maybe a streamlined skirt like we saw from her earlier, or a pair of pants that was tailored to her. But the way that she's wearing these pants, they are very large, and then they have that, she's tucked them into her boots, creating that very bellowed shape, and that lacks the structure, the straight lines. She's created this sort of rounded effect that doesn't work for this type. And the simplicity of the shirt underneath her jacket also doesn't work well. It's way too relaxed for her. As a result, the entire thing just looks sort of haphazard and the shaping is very boxy. So there's nothing that gives us that tailored shaping that would be great for this type and it, it doesn't work. So the, the jacket, which is fine, isn't enough to counter all of the other elements that are taking away from her. And lastly, avoid simple symmetrical shapes without sharp edges or an elongated line. Here we have Gugumbata Roar again. And in this dress, she doesn't quite look right. So the length of the dress I feel is fine. It has enough elongation, it's past her knee. But the way that it is cut and rouged up creates this very sort of soft effect that makes it not work for her. There's a delicacy to it that doesn't mesh with her very chiseled bone structure. And there's that billowing at the sleeves, too ornate, too soft, too youthful. The fabric pattern itself also leans quite youthful. And 
I think if I'm seeing correctly, this fabric, it's almost two pieces. There's a softer meshing on top of the blue fabric. I don't know, but that additional softness again just takes away from her. But overall, it's the shape. So it's very symmetric, which is okay. But if the other elements had been sharp instead of rounded, so that rounded shoulder pattern and the skirt and that trim that is added at her hip line that flares out a bit, all of that creates this these additional folds that are very rounded and makes this way too soft on her and it, it doesn't work. Line and silhouette. The dramatic classic silhouette is always trim and tailored with sharp edges. Think clean, sleek lines, straight lines, elongated draping, a strong defined shoulder line with crisp edges, and a strong vertical and or diagonal lines. In these three images, I think all of these women look amazing. And you can see that their silhouettes are in line with what we just discussed. So there's that sleekness and that tailored feel. None of these are flaring out. They're very much following the body of each of these women. And there's those sleek lines. You can see it, I think, easiest in the last two images. So in the middle, Olivia Munn, her pants are very elongated. They come up to her waist and they go past her shoe. You can see that crease down the middle, very sharp, very beautiful. And her top is not necessarily the best, but those pants are so great that they kind of anchor that. And this look is very fun and youthful on her because of that softer top and a softer fabric and that choker. Very youthful, fun elements, but what's keeping this look together and anchoring it is those pants. If those pants are gone, it becomes a very different look altogether. And I think one that doesn't work quite as well as this. So I can't overstate just how important it is that she has a pair of pants that is doing all of the things that a dramatic classic requires. To the right, Diane Kruger is showing us those diagonal lines with the flare out of her dress, but everything else is very sculpted and sleek and symmetrical. And that diagonal breaks that symmetry in a way that works for this type. So it adds an additional sharpness and the fabric itself is quite weighted. I see a lot of rounded lines, but also very sleek and straight lines. It just, it's really great on her. There's a perfect blend of all the things that are required for this type. Also the simplicity of the styling, but the elevated polish of it looks great on her. And of course, Jackie Kennedy in this two piece, very classic, very signature. And I see those straight lines, that sleek collar line and that symmetry fabric is weighted. She looks very much the iconic Jackie Kennedy, who is the face of this dramatic classic type of style. Avoid clingy, ornate, intricate, or flouncy lines. So here we see this overly delicate silhouette. And in Olivia's case, this three-tiered dress is much too flouncy, very delicate. And then there's the lines of the shoulder where it falls off her shoulder and there's a mishmash and a crisscross of the fabric. It's just too much going on, but too intricate and much too soft also in the fabric, very light, and it comes off as too youthful, so rather childish on her. In Jackie Kennedy's case, the fabric feels a little bit too light. Because of that lightness of fabric, it creates this very delicate sort of draping on her that is just a little bit not in line with her. I wish there were some sharp lines that I could see and there's none in this outfit. So it just doesn't work on her quite as well. And where that trim is, you can see those folded soft sort of edging there that again creates that softness and looks beautiful, but doesn't mesh with her, doesn't align perfectly with this body type. Avoid unconstructed wide boxy or horizontal lines. So here we have Diane Kruger and there's a sort of lack of construction to this gold dress. It has a lot of draping at the bottom and there's also that one arm 
that has that softness to it on the right and the fact that the sleeves don't match is also not great for this type because it takes away the symmetry but in a way that is really jarring and there's just too much softness and roundedness to this dress again that doesn't work for this type in this outfit by Felicia Richard, there's that boxy wide silhouette. Again, she's completely lost underneath this very wide uh, kaftan sort of thing that she's wearing over everything. And it draws your eye because it's where the pattern is. So it's the only thing you see. So she really gets lost behind it and it just widens her silhouette. And it's also very long, so it condenses her silhouette. So there's just a lot that doesn't work for her. And then in this last look, Diane has that skirt that really flares out, that emphasizes a horizontal line, and that doesn't work for this type. We want to always focus on their vertical. So this just creates an imbalance. The entire look just has a very disproportionate look to it. Also avoid extremely severe lines without tapering. And I think this white dress showcases that there's an opposite effect of tapering because this flares out so much. And again, it just doesn't work. And finally, avoid plain symmetrical lines without sharp or sculpted edges. Here we have this dress that is very ornate in detailing, which is something that doesn't really work well for this type either. But if we just look at the silhouette, it's very symmetrical and it's very fitted to her body. But because of the lightness of the fabric and that ornate detailing, it has a very soft effect, which lacks the sharpness that would be best for Diane. And it just comes off as a little bit too delicate on her. It has no sharpness in the edging. I think that if the detailing wasn't there and it didn't look overly ornate, but still had the exact same silhouette, it would look simply okay. But because this is that very excessively ornate and delicate detailing, it takes it over the top and it actually detracts from her. I think this just looks very separate from her. Now I want to discuss briefly the importance of structure for this type. I think more than any other type, the dramatic part of the dramatic classic comes off in this requirement for rigidity in the fabric choice and just fabrics that can hold their own shape and give that sort of encasing to these women. Here we have Gugum Bataroa and for all intents and purposes, these looks would otherwise be okay for a classic type, but the fabric choice is too soft. And because of that, it just doesn't quite work on them. So this very first one, it's easy to see. It's much too delicate. The fabric is way too light. And then there's that trim at the bottom too, which is very lacy, also very delicate, very, very soft. And this look just, falls flat on her. It doesn't quite work. The middle one, I like quite a lot because it gives us that sharp lines in the V-neck, but the fabric itself is quite soft and flowy on her. So it's not terrible, but it's just not her best as we'll compare to fabrics that do keep their rate and we'll see how much that affects this type. So she looks okay in the middle, but that ribbon, very delicate, and the fabric itself is very soft, but it does have that bit of sharpness and the pleats are themselves a bit of a sharp element and that kind of helps, but overall still very, still softer than I would like to see on her. The purple outfit, a satin fabric, top and bottom really lacks a sort of structure. Like when I look at it, I think the design of it is fine, but if it was in a different fabric, this would be an elevated look, a different, heavier fabric. This would be much better on her. And we can see in these looks to the right, what I'm talking about here. Each of these looks is not that far off in design to the ones on the left, but the fabrics are heavier and they have that rigidity and they keep their shape and that singular detail makes all the difference. To the right, I think she looks a lot more harmonious. She looks sharper. She looks just more elevated. She looks 
much better than she does to the left. And I think that's remarkable that that simple change in fabric weight can do that. And a change in fabric weight will create a different tailoring. I know this because I make clothes sometimes, but you don't need to do that to appreciate what I'm saying. But fabrics that have that weight to them, when you stitch across them, it's very easy to create that tailored look because of the weight of the fabric. The fabrics to the left, because of how light and delicate they are in some cases, they don't have that shaping. So they become very billowy, very soft and drapey, which is great for other types, but not for this type. She is much more flattered by all the looks to the right that have that stiff, rigid structure and shaping. I see this again in Felicia's outfits. So here to the left, she has all that soft fabric, those draped lines, and she wears these caftans a lot. So you can see in the middle, and in fact, all these looks have that sort of feel to them. Very cool, but they just don't mesh well with her. She's sort of lost behind it. She requires a rigidity and a structure that would better harmonize with her and showcase all her best features without taking away from her. I think it becomes clear when we compare the looks to the left to the right, just what I mean. So this first look I like because it's still that caftan, very Indian-esque style that I think she leans into a lot and it's absolutely beautiful. But here the fabrics are heavier and they have more structure and that makes all the difference. Comparing this look to those to the left, I think she looks better far and away to the right. And then the two looks to the right in the middle, she has a suit on. You can see that tailoring in the shoulders and the pants are a little bit lighter, I think, but there's still those straight lines, that sharp tailoring, and she just looks magnificent. And to the right, she has that coat on, which is very sharp, very stiff. It has that structure to it, and I think she looks amazing. So again, for this type, more than anything, make sure that you maintain sharpness and structure and that rigidity to the shaping of your silhouettes and you'll always look great. Fabrics. High quality fabrics in moderate weights. Matte finished fabrics form the basis of your wardrobe, although shiny silks can be used for blouses or accents. Moderate piles pliable knits and woven fabrics. So here, I think the thing that's most important to take away is the quality of the fabric. The classic type really requires that sort of polish. And these are the people that can't have anything that looks worn out. It really stands out against them. So everything has to look high quality, the highest quality you can afford is what I would recommend for this type. Any traditional sort of fabric, you can see the woven styles here. In all of these, Olivia looks great. And again, the silky top in that green outfit goes so well with that leather type of fabric at the bottom. So lightweight fabrics and medium rays and even heavier weight fabrics are all okay depending on the person and how they're going to utilize it. And for evening wear, metallics or shiny fabrics can look great like she has on in that first outfit. So I'd say quite a range to choose from, but just always, always the highest quality possible. Avoid lightweight fabrics that cling or are ultra sheer. So in light of the conversation we just had about the importance of structure and weighted fabrics. You can see how going in the opposite direction doesn't do well for this type. Here, these fabrics are too light and too delicate. That middle polka dot outfit on Jackie Kennedy is just too flouncy for her and that fabric is too sheer to the right. That crinkly fabric, it is just a very difficult fabric, I think, for anybody to pull off, but it looks especially bad on a type like the dramatic classic that requires that refinement and polish and 
Diane Kruger really just looks lost in that dress. And then the first one is too ornate in the detailing. Lace is just too delicate for this type. Avoid heavyweight fabrics that are stiff and bulky. And again here, these outfits look like they are trapping these women because of how stiff they are. So they can handle heavyweight fabrics, but it has to have a particular polish to it. Starting with Diane to the right, the pattern of that outfit is too playful, too youthful, and just too loud for this type. But the fabric itself, that denim is just too heavy. And then the design of it makes it feel like she's wearing this woman-shaped cage. The neckline is much too high. The color is very intense. The, the design is very youthful, right? So all these things detract, but the key component being that fabric and that design just not working for her. And Olivia to the left, the fabric just feels a little bit too stiff. There are some shop lines in there that look good, but the way that the design of it, the fabric and the pattern works is very much broken up into that almost staccato feel that would better suit and flatter a gamine type. So it, it's too broken up and it lacks a sort of synergy with her and with each other that just doesn't work on her. And lastly, avoid rough textures that are thick. So in this last look, Olivia Munn is really not flattered by this ensemble. The key component, which is what we can see being the jacket, it's too bulky, the detailing on the pockets. And then that trim feels very rough and very textured. And the entire thing just comes off as being rough and not polished enough for her. It almost feels like a jerk of sorts, like she's wearing this for a gag, if that makes sense. It, it's just too juxtaposed against her that it doesn't harmonize with her at all. And it's all about that texture, that trim especially, and then that detailing just doesn't work on her. I also want to add that I think this type should avoid cheap looking fabrics, quote unquote cheap. So for me, this is fabrics that have this ultra sheen to them, but in a way that feels costumey. I think generally speaking, this is a fabric that most types should avoid, but it stands out more for this type because of, again, that requirement for polish and sophistication that the classic type has. And in each of these cases, I just don't like how this looks on these women, Diane Kruger and Gugun Bataror. It's too youthful and just lacking in sophistication. So just this sort of very costumey looking sparkly fabric is something to be avoided. And in that last look, Gugun Bataror, I think the fabric, it could have worked, the gold fabric. But I'm very much drawn to the fact that it's not ironed. That's what I think. Because again, this type requires that polish. So when I look at her, I just think she should have ironed her dress. And then I hate that large detailing, that sparkly. I think that's a rose, maybe. I'm not sure what it is. But that sparkly fabric on there, it just looks like there's something attacking her from the side of her body. And the fabric doesn't work. The detailing doesn't work. It doesn't work on her. This isn't something Kibi has said, but I would add it for this type. Really stay away from fabrics like this. Details. Details should be crisp, tailored, and geometric with sharp edges. You want sharp and sculpted shoulders, cleanly tailored necklines, pleats, crisp cuffs, pleated or notched streamlined lapels, double-breasted jackets, contrasting trim, piping, etc. The waist may be crisply defined with a moderate to wide belt with a geometric buckle or may be dropped or may be eliminated altogether. Detail that includes sharp color contrast is excellent and 
Sophisticated nautical type detail is also striking when it is crisp and tailored. So the words I kept repeating in this section would be crisp, sharp, tailored, geometric, sharp edging. So that is what is most important for this type, crisp detailing and very fitted silhouettes and very sharply contrasted trim is all great for the dramatic classic because it creates that drama. And here we have what this could look like. Jackie Kennedy is such a great example for this type because she, I guess, intrinsically knew how to dress for herself, but also that sort of polish and sophisticated, refined dress code would fit her as the first lady, but it also just worked on her because that was her type. So it really elevated her style to the iconic level that it is held in. But that first look, you can see that sharp trim, that black on white and black on white. I think it's probably black and white. It's very sharply contrasted to the black trim and that's the key component. And it's very striking on her. It looks very chic in the middle you can also see that black and white i presume ensemble it repeats over and over in a way that creates a sense of harmony the black buttons on the white blouse and that black buckle on the white belt and the black top beneath the white jacket right so this creates that head to toe ensemble effect and of course the jacket itself and the buckle and the skirt they all have those clean lines and that sharp edging and even down to the bag she's carrying it has that very boxy shape again clean lines and she looks wonderful and then that third look you can see that fitted silhouette and again i see sharp lines clean edging just very clean very elevated very very beautiful on her in that last look by diane kruger i see sharp lines in the skirt in the shoes and that detailing works because it's interesting but it's very sculpted very sleek and very sharp so she's elevated the look and made it fun but really stayed within the requirements of her type and it's it's really really cool and that fabric in the skirt that geometric pattern with the squares and the black and the white again pulls this out and it's a very fun look on her but it still ticks all the boxes for a dramatic classic avoid ornate intricate or fussy detail including frills so here we see this in olivia munn in that first dress again for all the reasons already discussed this is just way too intricate and ornate and youthful and girly and soft and it just juxtaposes against her and it looks like it, it does look to me like she's wearing somebody else's clothes and it just doesn't harmonize with her avoid animated and perky detailing which I think we can see in this second look. It, it feels very perky to me, that sort of embroidery on the second layer of that dress. Again, too youthful. And then she styled her hair in those pigtails, which again creates an even more youthful look in a way that reads as childish on her and doesn't work. Avoid plain and symmetrical detail without sharp edges. So here we have Diane Kruger and both of these looks are not her best. So the first one is too symmetrical and simple. And my key grievance is with the fabric that's very light and creates that very billowy soft look that doesn't do much for her and there's nothing sharp and structured to sort of anchor it so it just looks very boring the second look does have a heavier fabric and because of that it has that natural shaping there is that sense of structure to it but the detailing is all very rounded so you see that rounded neckline in those two lapels the beret she's wearing creates that also circular rounded feel to it at her elbows there's that edging is also very rounded and the way that the skirt poofs out creates this soft rounded shape around her and all of these things just 
really lack the sharpness that would make this more harmonious with her and it looks a little bit costumey like she's wearing little girl clothes and here we have Gugun Bataroa in this very simple dress which I love I do love how this dress is cut I love how it sits on her the fabric feels to be very high quality. I think it looks great, but it is too simplistic in the detailing. So there's absolutely nothing going on. And as a result, it looks a little bit boring on her. I think boring itself works on classic types, but there does need to be something to focus on. And here, it's a little bit too plain. There's just really nothing to look at. This dress is fine, but the colorway is too close to her skin tone. In a similar dress, in a color that was more contrasted against her, that could be the visual interest, that very simple visual interest. The classic type doesn't require much, but they do require some. And here it's just completely devoid of any detailing and it's too minimalistic. Separates. The dramatic classic should use separates carefully. Separates can be extremely effective for you when well-planned in matched sets. An ensemble approach to your head-to-toe appearance is always necessary. So here we have a couple of looks of these women in these head-to-toe ensemble, well-planned sets. And I think they all look amazing. So these are separate pieces, but they give off that sort of matching set feel, like they come together and that elevates the look for them. This is done by the use of color chosen. So for example, in Olivia Munn's look with the gray jacket, she has the black going from top to bottom from her sunglasses down to her shoes. And that really creates a streamlined look. And then the jacket is very well balanced against the black. And the buttons also have that black feel, which just really pulls everything together. It looks great. Likewise, to the right of her, Gugun Bataro has that black shirt, black bag, black shoes, and then a gray skirt, which is very close to the black with the black buckle. And it feels like it all came together. And that's beautiful on this type. Very simple, but very elevated on them. And this can also be achieved with the use of fabric. So in Diane Kruger's case, in the middle, she has a denim jacket and denim pants. Now that just creates a set. You know, these probably weren't bought together, but if you look at it, it, it creates that feel. And again, the shoes and the bag match very closely together too. So it, it looks like it was put together as a set and that looks great on her. I love this look on Olivia to the left of Diane where she's wearing that blazer and that blazer A does the heavy lifting of elevating this look. It has the sharpness, it gives her the shoulder detail, it gives the symmetry with the buttons, it just really pulls everything together. Everything else underneath is a very basic outfit, but because of that blazer, we now have it being elevated to something spectacular. And also her use of color is very harmonious. So there's the black of the shoes and the sunglasses and everything else is tones of blue. So I think that blazer, it looks navy to me. And her denim jeans also have that blue to it. And the white becomes an accent color that just works really well with those two other colors. So a very simple, clean palette that she created this ensemble look with the use of color. And then finally, that look that Jackie Kennedy has is separate, but because the white jacket and the white skirt overlap, it creates that long line that you could almost think it's one piece and it's broken only by the black top underneath, which black and white is a classic color combination, highly contrasted, and it just looks great on her. Very elegant, very polished. Color. Your use of color should be bold and sophisticated. 
Neutrals and deep colors are quite effective as they provide a background of simplicity to showcase your elegant use of line. Pastels can be equally effective if the fabric is special and if you use them in head to toe sweeps. Contrasting trim is striking on you, particularly in two color combinations. And the key is to pick up the accent color in several places, not just one. So you create that put together matchy matchy kind of look. And I think these women have done it well in these three images, starting with Olivia Munn. A couple of things make this work. I love her use of the black accents from head to toe to really create that ensemble effect. It's the trim of her top, it's at the waistline, it's at her shoe, it's in her bag, it's in her jacket. We generally want to avoid a staccato effect for the dramatic classic, but here it works because there's an elongation with the skirt and it stops it from feeling too broken up. There's also elongation from the jacket. So there is that breaking up of that long vertical in the coral color, but it's done in such a way that it feels balanced because there's still elongation with the jacket and with her skirt. And overall, the way that it picks up in all of these pieces creates a long line of black that just pulls everything together and she looks great. In the middle look, the red is obviously the accent color, but it's again picked up in more than one place. It's at her waist and then the way that it comes across on the underside of her skirt really makes it look like something that was well thought out like a matching set that looks great and then the white is again also picked up in her shoes so this is just a perfect way to have a completely balanced look and the colors all work great and these are all very striking strong colors which is great for this type and the edges, as you can see, are very streamlined and very sleek. So a lot of things working together. The skirt flares out very much in a way that we wouldn't necessarily recommend for this type, but everything else works, so it's, it's okay. I still think this is a look that looks good on Diane Kruger. And then, of course, in the last image, Jackie Kennedy is wearing this purple-red ensemble, and then the red is further emphasized by her waist belt so that it creates that ensemble effect. It's coming in to, as an accent color, but it's repeated all over the pattern of this dress. And that just works great. This sort of matching style is very wonderful for the dramatic classic type or any classic type in general because it just gives them that polished, put together ensemble effect that makes them shine. Avoid multicolor splashes, a mix and match approach to color. In these three looks, you can see that this is happening. There is that sort of mix match approach going on and it just doesn't work on this type. In Diane's case, I don't like how there's that splash of pink and the green in the pattern and then the pattern below is also different. It just looks very unbalanced and it doesn't work for her. Likewise, in the middle, Gugumbata Roa is mixing her patterns and also mixing her colors within that mixing of patterns. The patterns aren't too far apart, but they aren't exactly the same and it just really juxtaposes against her. It's like she truncates herself where the skirt cuts off and that color changes. It's not great for this type. And in this third look, you can see that the fabrics themselves and the design of the clothes is fine. I can see those straight sleek lines in the jacket and the skirt, very crisp sort of detailing and the trim is great. But the way that the colors are used just makes this come off as too playful. So it's great for an editorial piece, which is where I pulled it from. So wonderful for magazine type work, but in real life, it just looks too costumey. It's, it's too youthful on her and none of the colors work together. I love the red lip because it repeats in the red shorts, but otherwise it's just very separate. It feels like three separate pieces and we 
want to create something that feels more harmonious for this type. Avoid all neutrals or monochromatics with no bold accents. So here we have Olivia Munn in this head to toe brown look and I think you'll agree she really disappears behind this suit. There is nothing to focus on. There's no contrasting trim. We can, I guess, say it is an ensemble. It has that effect because it's a top and a bottom that match together and everything matches each other. But it's too close A to her skin tone and just has no accent color whatsoever. And there's nothing, there's no detail to look at. So she just vanishes completely. And then of course the tailoring of the pants doesn't suit her or the jacket for that matter. It doesn't fit her quite as I would like to see it. Not sharp enough. The fabric's not heavy or stiff enough. It's just a lot of things not working, but the key thing is that color, that use of color is simply too not interesting. There's, there's nowhere to focus and that doesn't work for this type. Prints should be geometric, slightly oversized and bold in color contrast. Stripes, zigzags, slashes and asymmetrics also work. So here we have use of pattern that works great on these types. In the first one, Gugun Bataro has stripes and those long elongated lines work great for this type. And also the top part is diagonal, the bottom part is straight up and down. So all of these things really working well. It's also a one shoulder dress. So there's another diagonal line cutting across her body. The fabric is okay, but I think altogether a look that works for her as we focus on the pattern. In the middle, we have these tweed, I believe, sort of styles, and it's very traditional patterns that I think generally work for classic types. This is what I picture when I think of a suit. So anything that has that effect will typically work for this type. And I think Diane Kruger looks great. There's a boldness in the buttons and contrast in that second look, which is great. And that first look of hers is reminiscent of Chanel. It might be Chanel, I'm not sure. I always think of the classic type when I look at Chanel cuts and Chanel suits, especially the soft classic. But that fabric and those cuts always really harmonize with them well. In this case, there's that sharp angularity to the lapels. So they work better for a dramatic classic. And that's part of the reason they work so well. But that repeated sort of pattern looks great. And in that last one, there is a slightly geometric feel. And the use of color, I just... I love it. I'm not sure why I think this works so great on Olivia Munn, but that pattern is great. It's slightly oversized and has a lot of that color contrast, very bold in the color use. And I think that just works great. And then the way she styled it too, that blue color in her boots speaks to the blue of her sleeves. Not the same, but it does something to kind of give it that elongation. And I just really love that use of color in that pattern. Avoid flowery prints. This feels too delicate and soft in a way that is not harmonious with this type. It's too ornate for them. Avoid soft flooring prints. So here you have that sort of solid color and it changes at the bottom to something else very swooshy and almost watercolory. I think this doesn't work because it lacks the, the strong lines of this type. Everything is kind of meshing into each other. It's too delicate and too soft. Look, I wouldn't say is horrible on her, but the pattern itself is not something I would recommend. This really, this type requires more structure, something more solid. Avoid ornate prints. So here you have Jackie Kennedy and this print is just simply too small and too delicate and very detailed that makes it ornate and it's very much not in harmony with her. I see the print and then I see her behind it so they're not meshing together. Avoid irregular prints. So here I see the geometry, that part is great, but the way that it repeats is irregular. There isn't that sense of 
symmetry and calculated repetition, which would create a more regular pattern, which would fit this type more. This is very much Picasso-esque and that doesn't work for this type. It's too artistic almost for them. Avoid animated or cute prints. So again, there's too much going on here. It's too playful, too youthful, and on them it feels very childish and that just doesn't work. Avoid small symmetrical prints. Here, everything else about this dress is great. The sharp lines, the silhouette, I would love it otherwise, but the print itself is just too small in the parts that created and it almost looks busy on her. And now let's look at Kibbe dramatic classic clothes. Please note that David Kibbe has repeatedly said that clothing doesn't belong to any specific type and that rather it's how you put a piece into an entire outfit that makes it either appropriate or inappropriate for that type. With that, the coming wardrobe is a selection that I would make if I was a dramatic classic and I was going about putting my wardrobe together. For lingerie, think matching sets, think simple lines and very clean detailing. I love this yellow piece. Again, very clean, very simple, that matching top and bottom. I love the simplicity of the detail and just very, very beautiful. Likewise in the middle set, and I love the negligee to the right, that slight delicacy in the lace, but not too much again, because lace quickly becomes too ornate for this type. And that edging is very clean and just the lines are very simple. Everything does have to be soft because it's undergarments, but I think this would look great on a dramatic classic. For swimsuits, we have that classic silhouette, the symmetry, and the very clean lines again in both that first and middle one piece and that black top and bottom and then to the right i love the white trim and detail on that one piece and notice those straight lines that sleekness in the silhouette and the sharpness of those lines where the black meets the white i think all of that works together to create something that would really complement a dramatic classic for shorts, I focused on straight lines, simple detailing, and just a very clean sort of aesthetic. I love the pleated detail and again, the cleanness of the lines and the sharpness thereof. I think this would really complement this type really well. Very classic also in the fabric choices, very high quality fabrics, nothing too in your face. The color rays are quite subdued depending on the person, just very, very elegant. For casual tops, we have that sharpness in the v-neck of that white t-shirt. So this type would be better suited to that sort of neckline as compared to a rounded neckline or a boat neckline, for example, the v-necks would be best because they follow that angularity. In the middle, there is that structure in the collar. So the fabric has some weight to it and it provides that bit of structure. And this is casual, but it has that polish to it, which is great for this type. And likewise, that shirt to the right has the colorway. It has a sharpness in the lines, very almost formal, but this would be very casual on a classic type because of that polish that they require. Blouses should be elegant and tailored with sharp edges and crisp detail. And you can see that in these shirts over here, there's the crispness and the sharp lines of the cuffs and the collars and very simple detail in the buttons. And in this blouse with the purple v-neck, you see that sharpness in that neckline, again, following the angularity of this type, high quality fabrics and very simplicity in the design. You want to avoid any frilly ornate flouncy styles with excess detail. Also avoid unconstructed styles with no detail. 
Sweaters should be lightweight and elegant. Silky and skinny rib styles are excellent choices. They should be slightly elongated and cardigans with pads and jacket styles are very good for dressy casual look. A couple of examples here show just that sort of simple, clean, elevated feel of the fabric, some ribbed, some more sleek, and that first one has a bit of that elongation. Again, here, the quality, the importance of the quality cannot be overstressed. Cashmere, um, very high quality wools is very important and would be the best choice for this type. You want to avoid fluffy knits with ornate trim, thick, rough, or heavy knits that are bulky, shapeless sweaters, cropped sweaters and vests, symmetrical styles with plain detail such as crew-necked Shetlands. For pants, simple tailored styles with pleats and man-tailored detail are best. Pants should be clean, sleek, and elegant. Here, notice the long line, so that elongation, the high quality fabrics, the simplicity in detail, the pleats, the tailored looks, and the general clean and elevated style. Avoid fussy or ornate styles, tapered or pegged styles, wide, baggy, or unconstructed styles. This carries on to jeans. So here you'll notice an elongated line in that first pair that goes up to the waist, really focusing on that elongation. That said, these women can vary in their ability to carry long lengths. So that middle option provides a slightly more cropped piece, but still has that structure and those straight lines. And that last piece is just a classic type of jean pant, slim in the fit, and very clean. So nothing ribbed or any excessive detail. Jackets are a mainstay of this type and you should have them for every occasion. They should be crisp and tailored with sharp shoulders and an elongated line. Double-breasted jackets are quite effective for this type. Here notice the sharp lines, the detail, the symmetry, the top one has that very sleek sort of lapels, that sharp is again. The black jacket I also like for dramatic classics. Technically it is a bit more rounded in the neckline and the edging, but it functions as a less formal option for the dramatic classic. And I think in those sort of settings, it would look absolutely wonderful. Again, here, the important thing to remember is clean lines and high quality fabrics and excellent tailoring. These are the same things to keep in mind when looking at coats. I like this first one because it's a very traditional trench coat and anything that leans traditional will flatter the dramatic classic. And this one acts as a lighter option. In the middle, again, you see that structure. You see those very sharp lines and very classic looking buttons, all very sleek and streamlined, very beautiful. And the third one acts as a less formal option. The lapels are a little bit rounded, but there's still that sort of straight lines and the fabric is such that it does provide structure, further emphasized by that waist cinching, which can be optional but I just love the quality. I like the lines and I like how clean and simple it looks. Skirts should be straight and narrow. It's important that the skirts are flat from the hip to the upper thigh area. So if they will have a little bit of flare, those pleats need to be stitched down at the top so as not to upset the sleek vertical line. That sleek vertical is the most important thing to preserve. Longer is perfect for evening, but also the lengths can vary. Like in that bottom, I think that that's a great way to incorporate a shorter length, but notice how it has that stiffer, heavier fabric. It has that traditional sort of pattern and it's just very subdued in the colorway. I think that would look great with a nice fitted blouse. The skirts can flare out gently towards the bottom. To the right, you can see that jacket and long skirt pairing, which creates a suit ensemble, which is wonderful for this type. I think that is an excellent choice, especially when worn together like that. You want to avoid full flouncy skirts, skirts with fussy detail, A-line skirts, 
wide unconstructed skirts. Dresses should be tailored, sleek, and narrow with sharp edges and crisp detail. Waist may be defined with a wide geometric belt or can be dropped low or even eliminated. Elegated draping or bias cuts are also soft and elegant. Sharp and sculpted shoulders, if the dress has shoulders, are a must. Here, notice that long vertical of the black dress. Notice that straight line diagonally across the chest, sleek contouring to the body. Fabric feels a little bit weighted. Notice also how it's well accented with the sharpness of the shoe and that color contrast between the black and the white in the shoe and the bag and that belt that adds that geometry with that buckle. Another option would have been to have a white belt to have that play on the colors and that sharp contrast and really build in that ensemble effect, but this looks great as is. And to the right, I love that sculpted shoulder line of that reddish dress. Notice that sharp V and again, that sculptural addition there in the shoulders is just so beautiful. And it has that great shaping and those very sharp edges. That's a beautiful, simple, classic dress. And to the right, it's a little bit more draping, very soft draping though, very lightly done because too much draping doesn't harmonize well with the dramatic classic, but a little bit can be flattering. And again, even there, there's still those sharp lines in the V and a very simple silhouette that has great shaping. For evening wear, focus on symmetrical shapes with clean geometric detail, shoulder emphasis, angular necklines, smooth fabric, beaded fabric, understated trim, slinky sheaths, jacketed gowns, tailored dinner suits, long gowns with sharp shoulder emphasis, tailored cocktail dresses, evening pants with a jacket. Here we see a couple of these at play on Olivia Munn. I see high quality fabrics. I see sculptural detailing. I see fabrics that keep their shape and I see sharp angular lines, whether it's going straight across her chest or diagonally across in that orange dress, that sharply contrasted trim in the navy cocktail dress with that white trim at the neckline. I see that tailored jacket. All of this are just great details and great things to lean into if you're going for that elevated evening look for a dramatic classic. And now let's discuss Kibi dramatic classic accessories. All accessories should be clean, elegant, and crisply tailored with sharp edges. Bags. Bags should be crisply tailored. Best styles include envelopes, clutches, and all box-shaped bags. Metallic evening clutches are great. Narrow to medium briefcases constructed with the frame. So here you can see that the most important aspect to all of these bags is the structure. I can clearly see defined lines, crisp edging, very minimal detailing, and a polished upscale look to all of them. You wanna avoid overly delicate or ornate styles. Also avoid large unconstructed styles. Shoes should be angular, tailored, and narrow. Tailored flats are great, sleek slingbacks, and two-toned styles like the Chanel Spectators are also great for this type. Again, notice the angularity, the sharp lines, and just a very polished, simple design in most cases. Chanel as a brand, I think, is one that works great with the classic because it has that sense of tradition, polish, elegance, and upscale simplicity which in a nutshell is what this type wants to go for. Some detailing can be okay, just make sure that it's understated and the whole essence of the shoe remains elegant. You wanna avoid overly delicate or strappy styles, heavy, chunky styles, plain pumps or simple symmetrical styles. Jewelry should be sleek, elegant, and slightly chunky. Geometric shapes with sharp edges, smooth circles, can also be utilized in the shape as long as they are crisp and oversized. And for this type, one signature piece is normally enough for a look. Otherwise, too much jewelry can become a little too dainty 
and a little bit too much. So the highest quality you can afford again becomes a sort of mantra for this type. And all of these pieces have that high quality materials and use, whether it's gold or gemstones or something very traditional like pearls, leather, any of it is possible just as long as the final product comes together in a way that has a high class finish. Hats should be crisply tailored with sharp edges and contrasting trim, moderate to small size, geometric and clean. So here again, clean lines, sharp trim, that angularity, that sharpness, that sleekness, just in a hat form. That last hat has a little bit of roundedness to it, but again, the edging is still quite firm and that rigidity allows it to still work for this type. You wanna avoid fussy hats with ornate trim, oversized styles, severe styles, unconstructed or floppy styles. Belts should be moderate to wide with large geometric buckles. Contrasting color belts to match your shoes and jewelry are great. Avoid waist cinchers, so anything that's going to hold you at the waist and obstruct that long vertical is not for this type. Avoid overly ornate styles or any delicate and narrow styles. Here again, the focus should be on high quality materials. In these cases, it's all leather and the buckle. That's where that geometry and sleekness and that polished finish of those buckles becomes important because that's where it aligns with the specifics of this type. So make sure that that's front and center should you be wearing a belt. And with that, I would love to know if you are a dramatic classic. Also, if you agree with my assessment of this type. Let me know in the comments. I love to hear all of your thoughts. If you liked the sample wardrobe I created for this type, I would love to give it to you as a free download. Keep in mind that it's more than just the wardrobe items. So the document I've created has all the items, of course, as well as the accessories, but also a breakdown of the body type and the essence. And I think it's just a very useful thing to have in one place if you are a dramatic classic. So if you're interested, I will leave a link in the bio where you can go over and download that. And I really hope it's helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like the content that I'm creating or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. I'll see you on the next one.